the 80th anniversary of D-Day. The president, along with local veterans, are in France right now to honor this historic day. And joining us live from Normandy, France, is CBS Morning anchor Tony DeCopo. Tony, good morning. And before we get into the importance of this event and the significance of mm -hmm. it, can you just describe the atmosphere there right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning. Uh, the, the atmosphere this morning, it's one of, of mixed emotions, I have to say. On the one hand, there's a, a deep feeling of honor behind me, the 9,388 American soldiers under crosses and stars of David, most who died on D-Day or shortly thereafter. And then further over my shoulder, you have the tree line and then Omaha Beach, scene of the deadliest fighting of that day. And there's also, though, a feeling of celebration today. There are tears in, in, in many, many eyes as I see people walk by and trickle into the service here. And they're crying for two reasons, they tell me. They cry because of what was lost, the sacrifice. But they also cry for what was defended, what was saved in this war now 80 years ago, which didn't end on D-Day, but D-Day is credited with being the beginning of the end, this rare turning point in history. Uh, Tony, we know a lot of veterans made the trip to France, including some from here in the Chicago area. We covered their departure a few days ago, which gave me goosebumps for the fact that they're still with us and able to make this pilgrimage back to Normandy. How important is it to remember that sacrifice that was made there 80 years ago? And just can you describe just the uh, reaction to having those living veterans still there to take part in this 80th anniversary? Yeah. Well, so part of the power of, of this particular anniversary ceremony is that it is believed to be the last where these shores will be greeting these veterans and their living presence will be a part of the remembrance. And so what that underscores and the reason you have a standing ovation going on right as we speak for veteran after veteran after veteran is because there's an understanding that the burden of memory is being forever transferred from that generation to this one. And I've been pulled aside by people who are passing by and they, the thing they want me to know and for me to communicate to people back home is that we don't want to be the generation that takes what was won here during World War II and squanders it. And we owe so much for the life we have today, the ease with which we live, the relative peace, the relative security. It's dependent on the difficult and deadly assault that this generation undertook on this morning 80 years ago. And if I leave people with one thought, I hope it's that one, that it, the duty of memory of holding these lessons is now ours and it will, will forever be. And now our job to pass it to the next. Yeah, never forget, mm -mm. as you hear it often said about the greatest generation and the sacrifices made by the greatest generation, mm -hmm. if you will, during World War II, and exactly, you know, what it has meant for history thereafter. Um, Tony, what do you have coming up on the show in a couple of hours? So I, I'm, I'm very proud. We're all very proud of the broadcast uh, coming up in just a short time. We have a conversation with one of the few surviving veterans of D-Day uh, who describes what it was like to make that run across Omaha Beach, landing in the water and then making the tree line, seeing some of his friends die, and then in the aftermath of that, being part of the grieving process two days later that led to the creation of this cemetery here. We also have a conversation with another veteran, also over the age of 100, who was part of a secret unit uh, dedicated not to taking German lives, but to fooling the Germans, and in doing so, by tricking them, uh, saving Allied lives in the process. It's believed, according to the Army, that up to 30,000 American soldiers were saved by those acts of deception. And then we'll have a conversation with Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, about not only the, the world that was born of World War II, of D-Day, but America's role in that world today, and a lot of people back home have questions about what that appropriate role is, how much money we should spend on it, how assertive we should be in the world. And I know the administration's perspective is that in the absence of American leadership, the world is chaos and violence, and that role needs to be extended, not one of retreat, something that presidents all the way back to Reagan have mentioned in speeches here today. So we'll also be monitoring what Joe Biden has to say now that it is his turn. Tony DeCopo, live in Normandy, France. Thanks so much for your report. We look forward to your further coverage on CBS Mornings.